Oh my gosh. It was such a journey. I think, well, the music business as a whole has always struggled with, with um, taking the business part seriously. And it's had a, a bad history too of record labels um, really screwing over artists to be blunt. Um, Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library, and today I have a great guest on that is in, in the that is in a business that you know what not a lot of people hear about. You know, like I said, new entries into this segment because sometimes you know when you look at an industry, some people believe that hey, that industry is already saturated or there are already players there. So I'm always interested to talk to entrepreneurs and business owners that are making their own way in a space that already has major players in it. So I want to welcome to the show, Travis Terrell. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And great name, by the way. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> now, before we jump into your business, Soundstripe, I really want to talk about, you know, what was your background prior to, you know, kicking your business Soundstripe off? Well, great question. I was um, I, I went to college for, for music. I started playing music when I was uh, seven years old. My grandfather gave me a, uh, a fiddle and we played, uh, I played violin and fiddle throughout my high school career, uh, played music with a lot of people, got really interested in playing jazz and and I played a lot of gospel at my church. And, and, um, and from there, I dropped out of college, made my mother very angry, uh, and moved to Nashville to pursue a dream of, of playing music uh, for a living. Um, and I was one of the lucky ones. And not many people get to, to say that. But I, I did play music for about eight years, uh, did it professionally all over the world. And uh, that led me to some interesting people. And um, and, and really, I started producing uh, records. I, I started, I got really tired of, of traveling. Um, and so I started recording and uh, recording different artists with my business partner, Micah Sannon. He was also a, a guitar player and, and a really great recording engineer. And from there, we just, we really started getting, um, uh, getting interested in music licensing. And we started getting interested in in you know music paired with video or film or commercials or things like that and you know what we found was there was a couple of problems in the industry you know number one it was really difficult for an artist to make a consistent living uh doing what they were doing and we got really passionate about that and the second thing was that music licensing was really complicated uh if you know if you want to license a I don't know, just a, a Beyonce song, you have to go through lawyers and labels. And it's, you know, if you want that song to be on a TV commercial or a Super Bowl ad. So it's still an arduous process. So that's what we decided that we wanted to focus on was how do you make um, really amazing music, but then make it affordable and accessible to all sorts of creatives. And, you know, from there, we got extremely uh, lucky, I would say, is we hit this huge tail of, of digital content creators, everyone from making podcasts, YouTubers, Facebook and Instagram content. And that's, you know, where we really hit it uh, in the early days is, you know, sort of met this different, we met this customer with, you know, a product that we thought was, was great. So that's a, a little bit of the background anyway. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, it's always interesting to hear people's background. And one of the things I can say is we've talked to a couple of musicians on the show and I've never really heard anyone go from the fiddle into jazz. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, that is that is interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I grew up in a small town in Texas uh, playing uh, bluegrass music, but then something really caught 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 my eye and ear, I guess, uh, more importantly, uh, in high school. And I discovered, you know, Miles Davis and, and you know, all of the, all of the jazz that, that was from the swing era and all that stuff. And it was just so fascinating to me. Uh, and, you know, jazz, it's, it's like its own language. Uh, and I just started, 
really learning everything I could about it. Uh, and that, that led, that led to other things, you know, me playing jazz and piano, especially, uh, but that, uh, yeah, it's, it's a different, it's a different world, but I love all sorts of music and that, that really plays into Soundstripe well, because we have so many different styles of music that we go after and things like that. But, um, yeah, yeah, it, it is oh. different. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you guys, uh, you know, first started off with Soundstripe, I mean, was there a, a, a particular genre of music that you guys originally aimed for? Or how did you kind of get to the place where you are now where you just have a wide array? Well, yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, any entrepreneur that I'm talking to, I say, you know, the first year of business, you're really trying to get product market fit. And what, what that means is that you have a product that a customer wants and they're willing to pay for. And you have to really kind of massage that over a course of a year. You don't just launch a product and it's perfect, right? Uh, you, it takes some time. And, you know, in the very early days, when we launched the company in 2016, we, we decided that we were going to focus on wedding videographers uh, and churches. Why? Because we thought that they needed uh, content. They, they were making content on a regular basis. You know, these wedding videographers might make a, you know, a wedding video every week, you know, for the, the, the wedding season. And, um, and so we thought, okay, how do we make the best music for them specifically. Um, and so that's when we really focused on things like uh, ambient, uh, beautiful music, acoustic folk. Uh, it could be a cinematic music, you know, if you're doing an, like an epic shot of a cinematic or, a, you know, wedding or something on a hill. You know, there's all those type of shots that, the, you know, wedding videographers needed. So, you know, instead of saying, you know, okay, we have all this, this jazz music or, or, you know, whatever, and, and trying to serve that to wedding videographers, it, it wouldn't have been a good match. Um, a year later, we decided to really focus on YouTubers. Uh, and we really studied what YouTubers needed. Um, and that was things like electronic music, EDM, uh, hip hop, um, uh, all sorts of things, you know, happy acoustic music. Uh, you know, they didn't want slow, draggy, like ambient music. So it was like, it was sort of the opposite. And we tried to make music for them. Um, so that's, that's a little bit. And then now, you know, we, we serve, you know, tens of thousands of, of customers. So we have, we have in all over the world and 140 countries. So we have to really think about, okay, what are these customers uh, using it for? What are they needing? And how do we best make the, the music for that use case? Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, one of the things I'm curious about is, you know, with your, your passion for music is, is something that I've seen a, a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs kind of have a challenge with, or it, it took a process for them to get through is when they started a business around something that they're passionate about of really letting, pulling your yourself back from your passion and focus more on, like I said, that product market fit. How was that journey for you guys? Oh my gosh. It was <laughs> such a journey. I think, um, I, you know, you have to, uh, the, well, the music business as a whole has always struggled with with um, taking the business part seriously, <laughs> uh, you know it really uh, it, it, and I think the, one of the reasons is and it's had a, a bad history too of record labels um, really screwing over artists to be blunt um, and so that's that to me that is a, a sensitive topic but for for us we always thought of ourselves as a technology company, you know, how can you make um, this amazing product for a customer? And it just so happens that we're in music, right? And um, we get to make amazing music. Uh, it took a while, I think, this journey of thinking through, okay, we, we went from, I went from, you know, being on the stage to producing artists to, uh, you know, being uh, on, you know, a part of this company. And, and so, and now I don't play music um, you know, just for fun. Um, but I get to lead all these people that are doing this interesting work. And to me, that's, um, I, I, I had to learn the hard way about 
you know, we're, this what you're passionate about versus what you're really skilled at and good at ver and, and pair that with your economic driver. Can it actually make you a living? <laughs> like um, some people, can, I can be passionate about basketball, but I'm not skilled at it. Uh, you know, uh, LeBron will always be better at basketball than me. Uh, and, uh, and so there's that, that those three things I, I try to, um, think about a lot, uh, and, and encourage entrepreneurs to think th those three things being passion, skill, and economics. Can it, can what you do make money or can it not, you know, and, um, and you have to think through those things, I think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one of those things that I think it is, it's a little uncomfortable for people to hear uh, when it comes yeah. down to something that they're passionate about. It's like, well, I don't want to think about the money side of it. I really love this. And it's just like, well, in a business, you have to think about that side. Well, for sure. I mean, uh, or it can just be a great hobby. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, you know, I tell a lot of people, actually, I'm, I'm so proud to just play music for fun now. And, uh, and, or, uh, you know, you might be, and also, I love cooking. It's a passion of mine. I love, I love grilling. I love making Italian food, but I don't want to start a restaurant, you know, because I know <laughs> that that, that restaurant, that passion is going to quickly turn into a nightmare. Uh, you know, and now I'm up cooking 14 hours a day and, you know, and now I'm dealing with the bills of it and all this. And so you have to really be um, intentional about, uh, you know, that marrying that passion with competency and skill, but also, okay, is this something that is going to, or that I want to spend my time on and can be fruitful, um, you know, economically or what have you. So, yeah, it's, it's gotcha. interesting. Awesome. Awesome. So now I want to go back to Soundstripe. When people are, you know, checking out Soundstripe, you know, what's the experience that they can expect or, you know, what can they expect when they're using Soundstripe? Yeah. So I think of Soundstripe kind of like uh, Netflix. Um, so you have an, you have an account, it's a subscription service. Um, and, and that subscription service gives you access to unlimited uh, amounts of music, uh, sound effects, and now we have video, but you can choose which, uh, you know, which pairing or individual asset that you want. And, um, and, and so you, and that is, that was sort of the, 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 the innovative game-changing business model um, that we had when we launched the service. Uh, we were one of two companies doing it, and now you know multiple companies do it. Um, but it's um, we thought that people are making so much content um, now that you know they just need to pick a song and go. And uh, before then, they were just paying per track. You know, okay, fifty dollars here, hundred dollars here, and that really would add up. Uh, and so we decided to make a subscription service. Now, when you go in the app, it looks a lot like uh, a Spotify would or, um, you know, Apple Music where, you know, there's a lot of search functionality. There's a lot of, of um, uh, playlisting and discovery things like that so that you can discover the music. Um, another thing that we're really proud of as a company is we try to focus on getting the music to the customer as, as quick as possible. So we'll meet them where they're at. Uh, we have an Adobe Premiere panel pl extension plugin. You know, if you're a filmmaker, you probably, you know, you might be using Adobe Premiere and uh, you know, you can go on Adobe, download the Soundstripe app and you never have to go to the, the Soundstripe website again. Um, we also have, you know, partnered with Twitch, have a Twitch extension that, you know, uh, now so many people are using and it's amazing, uh, you know, so we're trying to um, really push ourselves in the workflow of all of these kinds of customers and that that's exciting to us. Okay, awesome, awesome. Now, one of the things that I also noticed is you guys are featured with, I guess, the Atlanta Ventures. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about that uh, recognition? Yeah, so... You know, I think 
I, uh, I'm just so proud of all the, the recognition that we've gotten. We, honestly, as a company, we, we, we like it, but we don't focus on it. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, the, probably the, the, the best thing that happened as far as recognition that we've gotten last year um, was we, we, we were 68th on the Inc. 500 uh, fastest growing companies in America. And, and that, that was just awesome. Um, but it was, and, and fifth um, fastest growing media company, I think. Uh, and, um, and number one fastest growing in Tennessee. Uh, I think, you know, all of that is a culmination of, of, of your company culture and your mission. And, and I think, you know, that's something that we pride ourselves on in, you know, having, you know, we have, we have around 70 employees here uh, that work for the company and, and all of them really do care about what we're trying to build for these digital content creators and building a company culture is really, really important. And I think people don't, entrepreneurs in the very early stages, at least, are not thinking about it quite as much. You know, they're thinking about selling their product, which is good. You should be doing that. But, you know, at some point, if you have employees like, okay, what kind of employees are you bringing on? And those kinds of employees really dictate, you know, how, if the company is going to be is successful or not. And um, so I give a lot of all of those accolades and credit to, to those um, to all of the, the, the employees that we have that, that really care about what we do and get up in the morning and, and, and work every day on making, you know, a better service for our customers. Awesome. Awesome. Well, before we wrap up, uh, two questions I want to ask. First one is, if people are interested in Soundstripe, where can they find you guys online or where can they find you on social media um, to check Soundstripe out? Yeah, easy enough. Soundstripe.com. Um, you can search uh, royalty free music or just Soundstripe in Google. Um, we're there. And, uh, and I also have a little uh, blog I write um, on LinkedIn. You can find me there or at Travis, uh, Travis Terrell dot live. Um, but yeah, for, for most everything, Soundstripe.com. Awesome. Now, the last question I want to ask is, you know, I ask this to every guest that comes on is when you think about your journey and your experiences, what's two pieces of advice that you would share with other business owners? Ooh, that's, that's such a good question. It's such a loaded question, too, because there's I, I feel like um, being an entrepreneur is just collecting hundreds of these little tips, right? Uh, but I, I feel like if I had to pick a couple, maybe that people haven't heard before, um, uh, one thing that's been really important to me is this idea of persistence and self-awareness together. You really need both. Um, and they kind of uh, um, juxtapose each other. Um, you need persistence because you have to keep going no matter what, but you also need, but if I kept going on the wrong thing, that would be bad. And I, I can say many, uh, uh, many examples uh, that, you know, I, well, I was a live musician. And if I would have just persisted on that track, Soundstripe would have never started. So knowing when to uh, never quit, never give up, never stop, and then knowing when to quit uh, is really important. And it's hard, it's a hard balance to find. Um, but I'm so glad, and, and through Soundstripe, it's one of our core values is uh, to, to constantly think, um, you know, is this, is this the way we should be doing it? Um, so there's the idea of never giving up and then quitting. That's, uh, that's number one for me. Um, uh, you know, number two, I think is, you know, the ever changing job of the entrepreneur is to work yourself out of a job. Uh, and that's harder said than done. Um, there's a big difference. Uh, uh, the great uh, marketing guru, Seth Godin, I love his work sometimes. And he, he, he writes, there's a difference between a freelancer and an entrepreneur. And a freelancer is somebody Okay, if you're a songwriter, an artist, 
uh, or you're a, you know, a painter or a cook, like you are paid to do what you do best. And that's like a photographer, you know, you may have a, a business, but, but you're a freelancer, meaning you're paid to do what you're great at. Um, and, and, you know, I was a freelancer and there's nothing wrong with being a freelancer uh, as a producer and an artist. Um, but then, you know, switching hat to entrepreneur is to work yourself out of a job. And some people really have struggle with that because they constantly, as an entrepreneur, you, you're good at something. Maybe, maybe you're making a, a cake. Uh, you're great at baking cakes. And now you want to open a cake shop, uh, for an example. So, you know, if, but at some point, if you open that cake shop, you have to stop baking cakes, which is the hardest thing for somebody that was great at baking cakes and loves baking cakes. Um, and, and you have to hire people that make cakes better than you do. Uh, and that's sort of the whole game of the entrepreneur. Um, there's people now that we employ that are better at marketing than me. They're better at social media. They're better at technology. Uh, I'm just holding on for dear life, you know, because these people are so much better than me at that stuff. And that's the game. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid to hire people better than you and think of yourself as, okay, I'm trying to work myself out of this. And, um, and I think, you know, you'll be on your way. Awesome. Well, Travis, thank you so much for coming on. I um, appreciate hearing your story, your journey, and thank you for sharing your wisdom. Um, we'll definitely have all, all the listeners and watchers go check out Soundstripe. And thank you again, Travis, for being on. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like our content, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want to see more of our exclusive content, you can subscribe and become a member on patreon.com forward slash business talk library. Hey, the business talk library is the place where business makes sense.